Hello, welcome back to Physics 1107 Labs. Today we're going to do a lab in which we deal with kinetic and potential energy. And we will see how these two things can convert into each other and use that to do some calculations. So let's start off by talking about what these things are. The easiest one is kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is energy due to motion. Moving things have kinetic energy. And the formula for Ke is it's one-half times the mass times the velocity squared. That's not the only kind of energy there is. There's also potential energy. Potential energy is energy due to position. So if something's in a particular place, it has potential energy. And the formula for potential energy depends on what's going on in the problem. If you have electric fields, there's one formula. And if you're dealing with planetary motions, there's another, and so on and so on and so forth. What we're going to be using is good old lab gravity that's the same for everybody and totally free and completely dependable. And the formula for the potential energy due to lab gravity is given by this, m times g, that's the same g as we've used before, times the height. And when you see h, you should say, well, height relative to what? And it turns out, as long as you're consistent, it doesn't matter where you put the zero of height. You put it somewhere that's convenient and measure relative to that. And as long as you always use that as the zero point, everything works out and you don't have to worry about it. So what we're going to be doing today is using our little lab card and start starting it off with lots of potential energy and then converting some of that into kinetic energy. So we'll go something like that. And when you do this, you wind into yet another form of energy that appears whether you want it to or not, which is some of this energy is going to disappear off into heat. Heat comes from friction. Uh, friction acts to warm up the equipment we'll be dealing with. It uh, sucks away enough energy to make the calculations look bad, but not enough to actually make things measurably hotter. So this is what's going to happen. We're going to take potential energy due to position, turn it into kinetic energy due to motion, measure both of those, and some of the energy will wander off into heat. So let's get to the experiment. Okay, now it's time to do the experiment. And here's our setup. Uh, we have some stuff that should be very familiar by this point. We have the piece of glass with the echo clips lined up at 10 centimeter marks. Uh, we have the little blue cart with the pencil tape to it. We have some washers inside the cart just to give it a little extra boost, and we have a new thing this week, which is this ramp. This ramp is made out of the plastic that came in your lab kit, and it's held up by some books and carefully applied pieces of tape. And when you set this thing up, the hard part really is aiming the cart at the clips and getting it to move slowly enough that it doesn't just go by in a wish. So you have to set up the ramp to be an inch, an inch and a half high, and aim very carefully. Uh, what we're gonna want to do is put the card on this end, have it roll down the ramp. As it rolls down, it's losing height, increasing velocity, energy is turning from potential to kinetic, and then once it comes down on the glass, 
It rolls by and knocks the clips over with the pencil. All right, so that's the plan. And uh, we have to measure a few things before we get started, just so we know what we're dealing with. Uh, the first thing to measure is the masses of all this stuff. I have five washers I'm going to add to the cart. And the mass of these five washers we can find with the, the Newtonometer fishing scale spring balance gizmo. These things come out to be about 35, 36 grams. Let's just write that down. Put it up here. So we have M equals 36 grams for the washers, plus how much for the cart. Uh, we can measure the mass of the cart the same way. Just hanging on the fishing scale. And it comes up to be about 70 grams. I'll write that down too. Plus 70 grams. We will, of course, have to convert the kilograms when we start doing anything, but there it is in grams. The other thing we have to measure is the height of this ramp. So what we want to do is get the height of the starting point, that's three inches above the tabletop, and the height of the end, because what matters is the change in height from the start to the end. Um, the height at the end is the height of the glass above the tabletop, and that's about an inch and a half on here. So let's write that down. I'll write down the height at the beginning equals three inches, and the height at the end, H end, equals one and a half inches. And once again, we'll have to convert those to meters. We're going to use 9.8 for G. That's in meters and seconds and kilograms. All right, so we're now ready to actually start this experiment. Let me just put it all together. See if I can get it aimed up right. So we'll hit all those clips and not run into anything at the bottom. This, like I said, takes practice. So <laughs> uh, we may have a few tries going on here behind the scenes. And we'll start up Audacity. There it goes, okay, Audacity. is now recording on the microphone here. Uh, and off we go. Oh, a good one, first try. And I've got click, 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 and then a bang when it hits the end. That's exactly what I want. Ray. Okay. Do that till you get a good one, and then we'll come back and talk about analysis. Okay, now it's time to do the analysis. And to do this, we have to go back to Audacity and find the times that these clips fell over. Um, use those times to find velocities and uh, use that to find the kinetic energy. Now, as the cart rolls along the glass, it's moving on a flat piece of glass, so we should have a reasonably constant velocity, and uh, we will be measuring it several times, but that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. So, okay, let's go back and uh, have a look at the Audacity waveforms and see what we get. I've zoomed up the section of, of waveform that happened while the clicking was going on. And if I hit play, we can hear what was going on. It sounds reasonably good. I have some pretty clear clicks in there. So let's just start sucking some numbers out of here and seeing what we get. The first click is right about here and look down at selection start. That first click is at 
9.42 seconds. Okay, so there's the first one. Now there is a fifth click, but it's sort of buried in the mess that happened when the cart ran off the end of the track, so I'm going to ignore it. This is plenty for what we need. Uh, all right, we're now done with the Audacity files. Let's go to the spreadsheet and see what we can get. In column A, I'm going to have mass, and this has to be the mass of the entire cart, so it's 36 plus 70, which is 106 grams is 0 0.106 kilograms, which is what we always use in this course. Okay, the next thing we have to have is the height difference that this cart went through as it rolled down the track. It started at three inches above the tabletop. It ended at an inch and a half above the tabletop. That means that the height difference in inches was an inch and a half. And we'll have one cell for that, and then we'll have another one for the height in meters. And to get height in meters, we have to use a formula. So it equals the height in inches and the conversion factor from inches to meters, which you can look up, is 0 0.0254. So we put that in. Okay, so now we have the parameters we need. The next things we need to worry about are figuring out how to get the velocity. And we've done this many times before. We have a column for x, and the first one is going to be at x equals 0. The next one is 10 centimeters along, which is 0 0.1 meters. The one after that is 0 0.2. The one after that is 0 0.3. That's the x positions. We need another column for time. What time did it go by these things? That's these numbers. So we have 10.942. Your time numbers will probably not be like this at all. They, what matters really is the difference from one to the next. The 10 just indicates kind of when I hit the go button on audacity relative to when it started rolling. So there we have the time. Now we need the change in time. So I'm going to call that d time. And that is equal to uh, another formula that the time it hit the second one minus the time it hit the first one. And we've got that figured out. Now we can just kind of drag this down. Okay, so we now have a column called D time, which is the amount of time passing from one reading to the next. And they're all about the same, which is good. They should be. The velocity should be constant, and the distances are the same. So it's a good thing that they're all about the same. Finally, we can make a column for velocity. And this is given by yet another formula. The velocity is just the change in distance, which is uh, a change in x divided by the change in time, which is d time, and put that there, and there we have the velocity. Now I should be able to just kind of drag this down and, ooh, look at that. The velocity is staying nearly consistent. It's a little faster at the beginning, 
and then it slows down a bit, and that, of course, is our friend friction. Uh, let's put in a column for kinetic energy. So we need yet another formula. It's equal to 0 0.5 times the mass back over here, and then times the uh, velocity squared. So we're going to want V. And the easiest way to square something on a computer is just to multiply it by itself. That way you don't have to figure out what an exponent is. Uh, so we get that. There's the kinetic energy. Hooray. And uh, we can do that a couple more times. I have to put in a special figure here so it will always use the mass in the same uh, cell and not try to update it as I drag this down on me. Um, and there we go. So we've got the kinetic energy, and boy, this is all excellent. Um, okay, now we need one more column, which is going to be the potential energy. This potential energy is going to be lost as it went down the ramp, its height decreased, it got nearer the center of the Earth, so the potential energy has changed in a negative direction as the kinetic energy increases in a positive direction. So let's put in and figure out just once how much this potential energy changes. So we need to have the mass, we need to have g, which is 9.8, and we need to have the change in height, which we have uh, figured out already. So let's put in this. We have the mass, click, times g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. And then we have the change in height in meters. So we have to be very careful of units when you're doing this kind of thing. We'll put that in there, and we'll see how much has the potential energy changed. And we find, wow, almost uncanny agreement here. We have picked up the kinetic energy has increased by 0 0.0313 joules, and the potential energy has decreased by... 0 0.039 joules. So they're really in very close agreement. The potential energy loss is a little bit bigger than the kinetic energy loss. That's because energy is flowing off into heat. And we could actually even calculate how much energy is lost to heat. This is equal to the change in the potential energy minus the change in the kinetic energy. And there we see that we have lost 0 0.008 joules worth of energy to heat during this experiment. So this data is a tremendous success. These numbers came out much closer than I thought they were going to. And I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. What I want you to do is to try this experiment several times with different masses, Try different heights on this, um, you know, put another book under it. Do the experiment again. Try it three times with three different sets of heights and masses um, and send me the results. Okay.